Hi students. Okay, so we're gonna start looking at drawing faces. So I want you to take a look at this. Um, you're gonna be practicing while you're waiting for me. And I want you to see first how when you're looking at an overall face shape, you can define, divide that face into thirds. Perspective, and you're each gonna have a copy of this paper here. But you can keep this in, in mind as you're starting to look at a face. So while you're waiting for me, I, you have a drawing in front or a picture in front of you. And I want you to start mapping out um, the, the lines that you see here, the lines of division for the face, okay? So for instance, I have Mr. Clooney here, okay? So I'm first gonna be looking at the line of symmetry down the center of the face. So we wanted to find that first. So if I'm looking at that from his hairline, what I was saying before about the third is the section from here to here is the same size as from the bridge to the nose and then from the nose to the chin, okay? So this does it a little differently because um, it, do, uh, it doesn't show from the hairline. So it's a little bit different. But uh, faces are almost always found symmetrical from the hairline to the brow line, from the brow line to the bottom of the nose. So again, if we're looking at the face, we can see from the hairline to the brow line, from the bridge, I'm sorry, yeah, the hairline to the brow line, from the brow line to the bottom of the nose, from the bottom of the nose to the bottom of the chin. It's all the same, same distance. You can measure it on your own face too and see that that is gonna fall the same. Now, let's take a look at another picture and see if it's true for him. From the hairline to the brow line, to the brow line to the bottom of the nose. See, for him, it's different. His hairline starts much further back, okay? And his nose is shorter. So for him, it's more in line with what you see here. And then the chin line is the same as that. So his his nose line or his nose part is much uh, thinner. So when you're looking at them, it's not a hard and fast rule, but it is a general rule that you can measure a face like that. So sometimes they're a little foreshortened in the nose. From the brow line to the um, hairline, down to the bottom of the nose, from the nose down to the bottom of the chin. So he does follow the rules, but you can see Mr. Powell here. This is Colin Powell, and he does not. His hairline starts much further back. That could have been a part of aging, too. So measuring a face is the most important part of establishing um, the proportions before you start drawing a face. So you're going to start looking at face shape, and you're going to start looking at measurement. Okay, So we're going to look at the, cent the line of symmetry comes down to the center, okay? The line of symmetry comes down, and then my measurement across the brow line, and then to the bottom of the nose. Whoops, I missed my line there. Uh-oh. and then to the bottom of the nose here. Okay, so as you start to divide, I went a little high on that one too. You want it to be in the crest, like right in the crest of the brow line. Okay. So why, why do we do this? We start to divide a face like this because when we're drawing our faces, we need to have a guide for where, how far out until the eyebrow starts, how far out to the side of the face. You can measure 
everything on a face to give you a guide. Okay, the angle from the bottom of the nose out to the eye, what's that angle? If it goes out like this, but you're drawing it up like this, then it's gonna be off. So as you start to map out, as you start to map out your face and you start to kind of take a look at it, um, it will really help you to get it accurate if you really, before you start drawing, pay attention to the measurements, okay? You'll also see on the image here that they show you this circular, um, circular uh, to create the head shape. So that's also a good rule to follow, but it's not a hard, and, I mean, it's not one that I always use. So last year, students, if you didn't hear me talk about the circle, it's because I, I don't often use that circle as a guide. I don't draw it myself. But it is, it is good to kind of keep in mind that there is an overall circular, and that goes all the way to the crown, the top of the head, not so where the hair, and it can be hard to tell with hair on where that top is because hair can go very tall. Like you can see here, it's not going to go as tall on these guys, right? The hairline, the crown is going to be much more distinct. And it's not always so perfectly circular either as it is in perfectly circular people. But, um, but also, like if you look at this guy, like his hair stands up quite a bit. So he is not, he's going to be a lot harder to find. Like his crown is actually probably here, even though his hair is going to be a lot taller. And he's got a more circular motion to his head. So you'll see that that's on the image. I don't, I don't focus on that as much when I'm teaching you how to draw a face. I want you to focus more on the distance here, the distance here, and the distance here. If you draw those distances accurately, you will get the, an actual face spacing. Um, the other thing is the distance from here to here and from here to here. All of the sh pictures that I'm giving you for this drawing practice time, they're all frontal headshots. I'm not giving you any side headshots. So there might be some angular um, to it, but if you put your finger on the tip of their nose, out to the side, it should be pretty identical from side to side. And the reason for that is, or up there in the brow line, because it's a frontal headshot, unless there's something off with their face, most faces have a line of symmetry that goes down, and then that would be the same distance from side to side unless something, you know, birth defect or something like that, that's almost always going to be the rule. Even if their faces are not perfectly symmetrical, you'll still be able to find that basic measurement principle. So if you start drawing and one side is like really, you know, short, you start drawing your nose and you got this much on this side, but only this much on this side, your proportions are going to be way off and you're not going to be able to get an accurate representation. Also on your desk, you'll see a piece of um, tracing paper. So some of you are going to be able to, to are going to want to just try and draw this freehand and start to work through it. Um, and others are going to feel very overwhelmed by that. So say I'm not, I'm not feeling totally comfortable with how to get started and I'm feeling nervous about it. First of all, I would tape the, the paper. Um, I would just take a little bit of tape and, and attach it to the tracing paper so that it, way it doesn't move top and bottom, okay? And then you're gonna find your lines that I've already drawn, right? The ones I've already drawn. You're drawing these super lightly. These are not gonna be drawn in heavily. They are drawn super lightly. And then again, across your brow line, like so. So then you're gonna start to rough out overall face shape, okay? So when I start drawing a face like this, um, I'm gonna look at, I'm gonna look really loosely at overall face shape, not 
really even including hair, just the face part that I see. And so I'm gonna start saying, okay, I see forehead there, and I start seeing it come down here, and it comes down here like this, and then I follow. Now, if you're doing it without tracing this, right, then you're gonna be you're gonna be looking at it like this. You're gonna be saying, okay, I see the line here going across. And this is going to be light and loose. I see my area here coming down. Light and loose. I see my line here coming down. And then I see my chin line. I'm getting an overall general shape. There is nothing specific in this. He has kind of a rounder... Um, or a square or chin, rather. Okay, and then my angle going up is going to be kind of like that. My side going in is going to be kind of like that. And does this look exactly right? No, of course not. But that's, we just kind of are roughing it out, okay? So that's my roughed out face shape. Now... If I'm doing it on my tracing paper, I'm going to do the same thing, but I've got my face to guide me. So I'm going to go there. I'm going to find this line here. Notice I'm not bringing any hair in. I'm not bringing any ears in. I'm not bringing anything else in. Okay? So that's what I come up with. Now... Let's see, is my face pretty far off? The one I drew free? Yeah, it's a little bit off. See that distance out? I don't know if you can see that in the, see that's my drawing underneath there. So I'm a little bit too wide and I would figure that out as I did my measurements later. So, but overall, I wasn't too far off. So I should be more in that line right there. And I would figure that out as I did my measurement later, okay? So if I'm, you're going to start working on this, and then as you start to lay out this, um, your lines, then you're going to start kind of bringing in your, um, your overall shaping of the brows. See how I'm, I'm not trying to do any detailed working with the hair, the the tracing paper is just to get you comfortable with starting to see how the face takes shape. It's placement, where things go, how big things really are, how big the eyes actually are, how big the eyebrows actually are, how big the nose actually is. It can be confusing and it can be, um, we don't always see things as they really are. Um, so as I'm starting to kind of map out eyebrows here and then I'm going to start to kind of map out eye shape okay again I'm not doing anything detailed it has to be accurate enough it just doesn't have to be perfect so I'm not trying to be perfect about this at all I'm just trying to get an overall idea and um, layout of where things are and how big things are so if I have a nose here the nose kind of comes down to that line. I've got my corners, okay? Most noses, you'll see people draw noses like these super hard lines. Um, like you'll see them draw them like this. That's a cartoon nose, okay? Noses never have hard lines. The only hard line you'll ever really see on a nose is this point right here. That's the only defining area of a nose um, that you'll ever really see is this part right here. All bridge work on a nose is done through value change. And I don't ever want to see you guys like drawing these super hard, crisp lines on the bridge of a nose. That's how you draw a cartoon nose. And we're not doing that. We're doing a realistic face. So when you're when you're starting to map out 
don't spend the time. You'll see with even with this one, they don't they don't map out a bridge. Your line of symmetry defines the top of the bridge, but the side of the bridge, the side of the nose, is only defined by value later. Um, because value is how, remember, value is how you create from a 2D to a 3D surface in drawing. So all of this um, is what you're going to be looking for, just the overall shape of it. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You're just trying to get an overall idea and shape of the face. The face Now lips are always a trickier one because... Um, and they're hard to see under this, so I'm just going to give her a super loose outline because I can't even really see it very well right now. But lips are always trickier because we always think of people having these big, beautiful, full lips um, like him, okay? And so lips should always be big and beautiful and full, but let's face it, most of us don't have big, beautiful, full lips. We have a, a small, tiny lip up top and then a fuller bottom lip generally, or like Mr. Jobs here, we got hardly any lips at all. So you can't even see an upper lip on Mr. Jobs here. And he has a very tiny, tiny, tiny lip portion exposed on the bottom. So be very cautious when drawing the lips that you don't oversell the lips because lips are often where people make the most mistake. Um, they try to make these big full lips when a person doesn't necessarily have a big full lip. Like Mr. Powell here, he has very little upper lip. Uh, you know, I mean, it, it's a little bit more over here. But, you know, a smaller bottom lip. But it's not super small. And then this guy, he has virtually no upper lip here. And then kind of a, a fuller bottom pout lip. And again, this area down here is, divine, is defined by a value change, not a hard line. If you start doing hard lines on these, it's going to be too crisp and it's not, it's not going to feel natural at all. For this guy, if you have this guy, um, realize... There is no hard line at all. You have a general idea of where this lip ends, but there's no hard line. It's just a darker area and a lighter area. And that value change right there is what indicates the lip change. Okay guys, so that should get you started. So spend some time practicing that. That's what we're working on today. Again, you're just getting an overall outline. Or you all should have your pictures, your tracing paper, and this. If you have any questions, just keep working until I get into class, and I will see you in a bit. Okay, bye.